Hello, dear students. This is uh, Devangsha uh, from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. So far, uh, we have been learning this particular subject, which is called a uh, basic electrical engineering, and the subject code is 3110005. So, uh, in our previous session, we have discussed about the uh, chapter number one, which is called a DC circuit. So, again, in a DC circuits, uh, in our last session, we have discussed uh, the basic components of uh, electrical uh, circuits like resistance, inductor and capacitor. We have also discussed about the Ohm's law where we found that uh, the relation of uh, resistance, voltage and current uh, together and that relation how they are going to uh, effect on the performance or uh, operation of a specific circuit that we need to understand. Later on, uh, we also discuss about the once you are going to connect uh, resistances are in series or parallel with this respect you can also find a voltage divider rule and current divider rules. Uh, we exaggerate all those points in our uh, today's session. So let's start with the uh, Kirchhoff laws. So first we need to understand here components of the circuit design. So uh, why we are learning all this particular subject, uh, why we are learning all uh, those topics because design an electrical circuit for a desired output, right? So for that, uh, three basic components we learned, which is a resistance inductor capacitor. Now we exaggerate the importance of resistance components a part of the circuit design, understand the terminology of circuit design and we'll start with uh, one of the part of the circuit is called nodes. Another part is called the branch and third itself a circuit, right? After that, we are going to learn about Kirchhoff current law that uh, then we are going to discuss about Kirchhoff voltage law and uh, example or generalization. So let's start first with what is the node branch? Let's say, uh, let, let's say we'll start with the branch first. What is a branch? See, branch is not a single wire. There is a incorporation of components inside the any wire. So one component or uh, with connected with end to end, we consider as a branch. So in a circuit where you connect the component, that particular uh, you can see in this uh, diagram, there is a single branch where there is a one wire and two components are connected in series. So even you consider one component, that's the end to end point of this component. Uh, once you connect this end to end point of component in a particular circuit, you define this terminology as a branch, right? So you can also add more components and obviously this is a kind of series combination. Same way, if you add one component at one wire, if you add another component at another wire, if you add third component at a third wire, three terminology or this three wires is considered as a branch. So in this you can see there are three components are connected as a individual uh, wires, but those are connected at a single point, right? So you can consider all these three components at a three branches. Same way, next part is the node. Right. So, what, what do you mean by the node? So, ultimately, where all elements are connected, you consider this is called a node. Right. So, a node or you can also consider as a junction where all these three components are connected, that's defined as a node. So, ultimately, what do you mean by node? So, at any point, three or more than three components or three or more than three wires are connected with the component, that terminology is defined as a uh, node. So this is so important terminology. Why? Because many students are making a mistake that they they they, they give uh, given the definition like two or more than two wires or components are connected at a single point, which is completely wrong as three or more than three components or three or more than three wires are connected with component that is referred as a node, right? Okay. Now more circuit terminology we need to understand because if there is a resistance, if there is a branch, if there is a node, you can uh, see here uh, uh, this one of the circuit where point B as of this I consider as one of the point in a circuit where uh, I'm going to find the voltage drop across point number B with respect to ground. So whatever voltage drop you are going to get, that particular voltage drop is called the node voltage. So why this is very important because whenever you are going to take a circuit and at any point, if you want to find the voltage drop at that particular point or that particular branch, you can find 
all the voltage drop with respect to ground. So, this is one of the terminology in circuit design. Next terminology is we define as a path. Now, what do you mean by the path? So, ultimately, all this terminology depends on the movement of current. So, here the role of current in a circuit design is very, very important. Why? Because in our first session, we have discussed the voltage is worked as a force. Current is always in a motion, right? And resistance is nothing but a path. So, once the current flowing through any resistance, right, that is defined as a path. So, once the current is flowing through any resistance, that would have a voltage drop. And that depends on the polarity of this particular uh, current or the voltage drop. If the current is uh, flowing from top to bottom and the voltage drop is from plus to minus, that is a actual voltage drop. We consider that voltage drop is a positive voltage drop, right? But in uh, like this, if the current is flowing from top to bottom, but the drop is from minus to plus, we consider as a negative voltage. So, here, that is no positive, there is no negative. Ultimately, everything depends on the direction of current. If the current direction is opposite, see, the voltage drop would be the same, but the polarity is different. Now, we are going to use this branch concept and node concept to design circuit. So, ultimately, circuit is nothing but a closed loop, right? Now, everything defined based on the movement of current. So, you need to here understand the current started its journey from positive terminal of the battery and coming to the negative terminal of the battery. That means here current itself uh, uh, finishes the closed path. Current itself uh, come to the same node when, uh, where he has started. This terminology is defined as a closed loop or a mesh or we can consider as a circuit. Now, always remember to operate any home appliances, current must, must be passed through the complete uh, closed path or complete path, right? So, from where the current start, again, current should add at the same uh, battery or same source that consider as a uh, circuit. Why this is very important? Because when the current is flowing through any devices or current is flowing through any resistance, that would have a voltage drop and that particular voltage drop would drive or would run your further circuitry or your appliances, right? So, uh, here three important concepts we learned. One is called the branch, another one is called the node and third one is, is uh, must be a closed path. So, once you connect all this three terminology, all these three words together that become a circuit design, right? So, grade the circuit analysis and based on this, we found two most important laws and those laws are found by uh, one of the scientists named as a Kirchhoff. So, those laws, it becomes the Kirchhoff laws. So, there are two laws based on the Kirchhoff's theory. One is based on the voltage and another is based on the current. So, let's first start to learn with the Kirchhoff current law. Now, before that, let's start with some of the important exercise. How can you find, uh, how can you identify branches? How can you identify nodes, uh, right? And how can you identify the loop? So, first uh, start with, let's uh, start with the nodes. So, uh, you can see this in the circuit. Can you find how many nodes are there? Yes. Can you, can you guess how many nodes are there? So, most of the students making mistake, they are uh, they are uh, saying that there are three nodes, but ultimately there are two nodes, right? See, I already told you nodes, that means three or more than three wires are connected at a single point, right? So, here you can see the first, this particular point where two components are connected at a one point. This is the, this is the one of the node where more components, I, at least three or more than three components are connected at one of the point. This is a second node where three or more than three components are connected. But you can consider the point number X here. You can see the point number X is not defined as a node. So ultimately, most of the students are making that there are three nodes. Ultimately, there are only two nodes, right? Okay. In our same circuitry, if we want to find how many branches are connected. So, I already told you at one particular point, if there are more number of components are connected or one component with the end-to-end -to -end, uh, terminology or with the end-to-end -end wire, it is defined as a 
number of branches. So you can see here how many branches. There are five branches which you can consider at one of the branch. You can uh, you can you have a five branch or you can also consider as a four branch. Why? Because one VS in series with the R1, this is one of the branch. Same way R2 is another branch R3, which is connected at one particular wire. It is also a branch. And same way the VO or uh, this particular current source, which is called IS, is also one of the branch. Right. So you can here either consider as a four branch or five branch, depends on the uh, number of components. So we can quickly see this. There are five branches normal terminology once you use for analysis there are four branch right now same circuitry here here we uh, look for number of loops so once you start uh, in this circuit can you guess how many loops there are three loops if you start from the point number a so you can see there are three loops loop number one this is loop number two this is loop number three right so there are three loops again you can also individually define the uh, loop right yeah now here most important law we define as a kirchhoff current law right so in kirchhoff current law is always applicable to a node so node is very important terminology uh, for us why because it's a part of the circuit Right, so we can now apply Kirchhoff current law to any circuit. So your first job is to identify the node, right? And Kirchhoff current law must be applicable to a node. That means if there is no node, there is no Kirchhoff current law, right? So what this law says, so you can see here, you can identify one of the node and that particular node, if some, some currents are entering and some currents are leaving from this node. So here you need to define the sum of entering current here you define that sum of entering current is equal to sum of outgoing current. So ultimately, the algebraic sum of current must be equal to zero at particular node. This is called a statement of Kirchhoff current law, right? So you can see in the circuit where uh, three currents are leaving. Let's say I2, I3 and I4 are leaving and I1 and I4 I, I5, those are entering current. So ultimately, the sum of entering current is equal to sum of outgoing current from the node. So the algebraic sum of uh, current like I1 uh, with function of t. So always uh, say like this, I1 minus I2 minus I3 minus I4 plus I5 is equal to 0. That do need to identify the node and where uh, your next job is to analyze how many currents are entering and how many currents are leaving. So sum of entering currents is equal to sum of outgoing current. So ultimately here you can consider, let's say this is one of the example, like 6 ampere current is coming and uh, there are two branches, uh, one current is 2 ampere, then uh, another must be a 4 ampere. So here the algebraic sum of current must be equal to 0 at particular node. Uh, so this is what the statement is then and it is applicable for the nodal analysis. So that's a part of uh, further circuit analysis. So let's define here one of the example based on Kirchhoff current law where your first job is to identify nodes. So can you identify how many nodes here? Yes, this is node number one, node number two, node number three and node number five. So total here you can find one, two, three, four and five. So, so total five nodes. So now for each particular node we have to write a Kirchhoff current law. So you can see the load number one where I1 current is entering and I2 and I3 currents are outgoing. Right. So ultimately the algebraic sum of current at particular node must be equal to zero. That means the sum of entering current is equal to sum of outgoing current. So ultimately minus I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to zero where I1 current is entering but rest of the two currents are outgoing. So the algebraic sum must be equal to zero. Same way you can further uh, analyze and go for uh, node number 2, 3, 4 and 5 likewise. So this is node number 2. You can write, you can see this uh, particular equation where I4 current is uh, uh, incoming and rest of the two currents are outgoing. Same way, uh, this is node number 3. So you can see the particular equation. Again, you can, cons uh, you can uh, apply the same concept for node number 3, same way for node number 4. You can see the equation same way for node number Five. You can see this particular equation, right? So this is how you can apply uh, KCL you, and you can um, solve any particular example.
now of voltage low so here kirchhoff's uh, uh, applied uh, based on the current now the here kirchhoff apply its method based on the voltage so ultimately uh, this is applicable to a loop or this is applicable to a closed path right same way in kcl is applicable to node here kvl is applicable to a closed path so you can see here one of the uh, this is uh, there are two uh, closed loops is available in this particular circuit so you can find here so write the equation for a particular uh, loop number one let's say and you can define all the currents on a clockwise direction so here v1 minus i1 into r1 minus r3 but the current is i1 minus i2 because uh, through r3 there are two currents are flowing which are in opposite direction of each other so ultimately kirchhoff flows are nothing but based on the balance sheet right so ultimately balance sheet must be equal to zero so if let's say i'm going to apply a 10 volt in a loop so 10 volt must be dropped across each resistance right so uh, at the end the sum of algebraic voltage drop and sum of product of current and resistance must be equal to zero so you can find here the uh, um, sigma v plus uh, sigma i into r must be equal to zero for particular closed path so same uh, you can apply for the loop number two as well so this is called of voltage law now it is applicable uh, for the loop and mass analysis right so ultimately uh, K K kcl is applicable to node and kvl is applicable to loop right Let's say one of the example based on a KVL here, uh, one voltage source you are applying and there are three resistances are connected in series. So in each uh, resistance, there is a voltage drop. So ultimately here, you can apply the equation like minus Vs plus Vr1 plus Vr2 plus Vr3 is equal to zero. So ultimately, once you are going to apply a 10 volt, let's say, so the voltage drop across R1 is let's say 2 volt, the voltage drop across R2 is let's say 3 volt, that then the voltage drop across r3 must be 5 volt so ultimately the voltage drop across r1 r2 and r3 must be that's the summation of voltage drop across r1 r2 and r3 must be equal to the applied voltage of vs right so now this is applicable to individual loop again in this particular loop can you write the equation of uh, kvl just try it so here your first job is to identify the loop same way in a kcl you have identified the nodes here you have to identify the loop so this is a loop a b c d e and f in this particular loop if we apply the equation that equation would be looking like this way right so ultimately the source summation of source is equal to the summation of voltage drop across resistances now this is one of the uh, numerical that based on the kvl and kcl so you identify this particular circuitry where there are two loops right and there are two nodes ultimately so your your job is to find here the flowing current of i1 i2 and the third branch that is the current which is passing through r3 is equal to i1 minus i2 so ultimately i1 is flowing in a one loop right which is uh, passing through 10 ohm resistance then i2 which is passing through 4 ohm resistance so uh, across uh, 8 ohm resistance you can see the flow of current is i1 minus i2 so based on here you can find the nodes as well as you can find the loops so here once you apply kvl and kcl so let's you uh, uh, let us say you apply the kvl in loop number one so once you apply the kvl in loop number one you can see this based on this terminology you find a specific equation uh, uh, of loop number one where you apply a kvl so once you apply the kvl uh, in a loop number one so that would be the equation is uh, 10 i1 plus 4 i2 that is equal to 20 same way you apply the kvl in loop number two so you can find another uh, set of equation which is called 8 i1 minus 12 i2 is equal to 12 uh, now this two particular equation you found based on that your job is to find the values of i1 and i2 so you can straight away you can apply elimination method which is a, a mathematics method and from that you can be able to find i1 and i2 so ultimately once you find i1 and i2 you can also find the voltage drop across individual resistances right so let's say you will find here uh, after this particular uh, solution you can find here the value of i1 that is equal to 1.895 ampere and i2 that is equal to 0.263 uh, 0.263 ampere so which is passing through 8 ohm resistance is nothing but i1 minus i2 so based on current values i1 i2 and i1 minus i2 you can be able to find the voltage drop across uh, 10 ohm resistance 4 ohm resistance that is a particular bulb and the 8 ohm resistance right thank you dear students
here we have finished uh, Kirchhoff law right so this is uh, ultimately we are uh, going ahead with the more understanding of the circuit fundamentals then we apply more theorems more laws and uh, later on we have to solve a very big networks right thank you very much